where we left off last season, uh, we left off with Natalie and Crockett, you know, sort of getting closer. He uh, revealed a big secret to her, which I think, you know, made Natalie get to see him in a very vulnerable light, which I think made her feel a little closer to him. Uh, and we left off where Ethan and April, he found out about the kiss between her and Crockett. Uh, so the ED was in a bit of mayhem and lots of new little budding romances everywhere. Natalie's journey in season five was a big one. You know, she started the year off um, in a horrific car accident with, you know, memory loss and um, the trauma of that, of waking up from the memory loss and realizing that her fiancé wasn't really a fiancé. She gave consent to be her fiancé too and uh, thinking she didn't have feelings for Will anymore than realizing she had feelings for Will and then telling Will she had feelings for him and him rejecting her after chasing her for so long and... It was just mind-boggling for her, I think. She went through a lot of ups and downs, and then once things finally cooled off, you know, I think she started to build this new connection, a new friendship with Crockett, which I'm not quite sure she understood or maybe doesn't even still understand what that is, but, you know, she got to see a vulnerable side of him. Um, so, you know, she just, she went through a big journey last season. <laughs> Getting shut down prematurely last year was was really mentally jarring because we had so geared up to finish off the season and, you know, so many storylines were left uh, open-ended and it kind of just all shut down abruptly and everyone just scattered to where they knew they were going to want to be during this lockdown. And I think everyone, rightfully so, was just so concerned and worried about where the state of the world was going to go that I think we all thought, you know, maybe a little bit too naively that we would come back maybe in two, three weeks and finish up the season. And um, so, you know, we kind of just left everything as is thinking we'd be right back and then cut to eight months later. Now we're back and uh, it's just a whole new world now. So yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, just a day by day process really. I think season six is going to be really good because the one thing that I really love about this show is that I feel like, you know, Dick Wolf is known for ripping from the headlines, but I feel like it, our show is so relatable because of that. But now with the pandemic going on and everything that's happening in the world, we're so catering to that and really bringing that into our show that I think even more so this show is going to be so relatable this year. And that not only makes me excited uh, for viewers to see, but it also makes me really proud to be a part of. <sighs> what do I hope for Natalie for season six? Um, I'd like her to find a bit of happiness for a little bit. <laughs> you know, even when she thought she found it in Will, you know, they were going to get married and then he showed up all bloody and left her at the altar. So she just really hasn't had a great go at it. You know, I don't know if we all remember season one, she started off as a widow, you know, a pregnant widow. So, you know, I think it'd be nice for her to build a genuine connection, you know, that's not a guy slipping a ring on her finger when she's in a coma pretending to be her fiance. So the girl just needs like a little bit of a break, either just focus on herself or find somebody who's healthy and can contribute to the relationship as much as she can. <laughs> It feels so good to be back on set shooting um, after being gone for eight, nine months. Um, it feels kind of surreal to be back. Uh, to be honest, I did not think we would be back. I thought they were, we were going to get pushed further because I thought there's no way they're going to figure this out. And I think being on set, one of the most amazing things to me is how many protocols we have set in place and how much time the network and the studios have taken to really ensure our safety. Um, so it's really been mind boggling to me just how much is put into getting us back. This has been a crazy year for first responders, that's for sure. You know, my sister uh, is a nurse and it has been scary and beautiful to watch her process and all that she's been dealing with and you know talking to her on FaceTime or getting that picture at the end of work with the rings you know stuck around her face from the mask being on all day and all the stories that she's come home with and the fatigue and um, I'm just in awe with the people who are on the ground doing the work trying to ensure that we're safe and 
I know that it's not been a very safe year for those people either. Everybody is just flying by the seat of their pants right now. And I think, you know, with these shows, I love... I love the way in which, the lens in which our writers tell these stories, I stand behind, I think is really beautiful. Um, and I also think it humanizes these first responders. Yeah, I really missed Chicago, uh, especially uh, coming back so late in the season. Normally we get a little bit of summer in Chicago, which is always so thrilling, but even having nice weather in the fall and coming back, you know, it's not the same, especially you know, with the weight of production on our back, you know, I don't want to be the one that acts carelessly and goes somewhere and, you know, brings COVID to the set. So coming back to Chicago, I've been even more hermit-like <laughs> than I have over the summer because, you know, the, my job's at stake and, you know, the crew's job's at stake and my other actors' jobs are at stake. So um, so it's been different being back in Chicago this go-around because I haven't been able to enjoy the city in the way that I like to enjoy it. But... You know, the second I walked into my home here, I felt like, oh, it feels nice being here. So I love it.